undefined, isn't it? And secant of pi over 2 is undefined also. So if, if I gave you this expression right here and said, hey, plug pi over 2 in, you'd be like, can't do it, right? Mm -hmm. But if I gave you this expression told you to plug in pi over 2, you would have no problem, right? Sine of pi over 2 would be 0. So these can't be equivalent. And they are, they are but they aren't, OK? This is important for you to understand. These two are equivalent to each other so long as the theta you're plugging in doesn't cause any problems over here. I'm going to give you another example. It's something you've seen in algebra before. Okay, so I want you to just hang tight on that for a second. Do you remember ever seeing something like this in, in algebra? x squared minus 4 over x minus 2. And do you remember difference of squares in the numerator? Right? Difference of squares there, x plus 2, x minus 2. And then what did you do? You canceled the factor out, and you got what? x plus 2. And so you said that that was equal to this. But it's not exactly equal to this. These two expressions are the same, right? So long as x is what? Not 2. This algebra from here to here is only valid if x is not 2. That's something you, you kind, of, kind of slips through the cracks in college algebra. It's not stressed enough. The algebraic operations you did are good, so long as you promise me that x isn't 2. Because if x is 2, this expression doesn't make any sense. It's 0 over 0. Here, if x is 2, you're going to say 4. It works, though, for any other numbers. If you plug in 3 here, it's the same as plugging in 3 here. If you plug in 10 here, it's the same as plugging in 10 here. It works for every number except 2. I, I've seen, a, here's another example It's even, even, I don't know if this is going to make more sense or less sense or you, you'll still be indifferent about it. Look at, look at uh, these two functions. f of x equals 1 versus g of x equals x over x. Let's compare those two functions. If I graph them, what's the f function look like? No matter what I plug in, I get 1, right? There's 1. This is going to be a straight line, like this, horizontal line. That's this one. What does g look like? Well, plug in 1. 1 over 1, you get 1. Plug in 2. 2 over 2, you get 1. Plug in 3. 3 over 3, you get 1. Plug in any number. It's going to give you 1, except what? Zero. Except 0. You can't plug in 0 into that. So what, what this one, the g, is going to look like is this. It's the same line, like this, but it has a hole at 0. These two are not equivalent. When you Because a lot of people are going to be like, oh, wait, but that's just 1, right? That canceling can only happen if you promise me that you don't ever cause a problem here. Y'all get this? Mm -hmm. yeah. It's an important concept. As long as it's, it's, it's a limitation. It doesn't become undefined. Undefined or something crazy, yes. Yeah, root of a negative number or division by zero. As long as, as long as while you're doing the algebra, you keep that in the back of your mind that that could never happen, or you need to make sure that what you plug in doesn't cause that to happen with the original expression, then, you're, then it's equivalent. So we are saying here that this is equivalent to this, so long as theta is not pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, or actually, there's a lot of them, right? There's an infinite number of places that, that you can make cosine 0. Of the odd integer yeah, all that, you know, n, you have an n in there. So I just want you to keep that in mind. The book doesn't talk about it too much. I know it isn't talked about too much in college algebra. But I just don't want you to sit here and be thinking, oh, this is exactly sine. It's not exactly sine. How about this one? That was just to get you used to like moving, like rewriting and flipping things. And this next one, the instructions are a little different. Show, show that cosine theta over 1 plus sine theta equals 
1 minus sine theta over cosine theta. We want to show that these are, that these are equivalent. In other words, if I plug in theta here, I'm going to get the exact same answer as if I plug that same theta in here. And the way to show that these are true is to not just plug in a theta and check and say, yeah, it worked, because that would only show it worked for one value of theta. You have to show that these are equivalent, that they're the same thing no matter what theta is. So the standard approach for this, okay, the standard approach is to pick either the left side left-hand side, LHS, left-hand side, or pick the right-hand side, RHS, and what you're going to do is write one of those down. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to pick, I get to choose, I'm going to pick the left-hand side. I'm going to write cosine theta <coughs> over 1 plus sine theta. And now what I need to do is using just purely algebra, turn that into the right-hand side. I am not allowed to work with this as an equation. I'm not allowed to. I cannot sit here and go, I'm going to multiply this side and this side by something. No go. The way we prove two things are equivalent is you start with one side and manipulate it into the other side. So how in the, well, how in the world am I going to get that to become this? It's not something natural that you should see right away. It's not. So let's, let's start with this. And this is where I said, sometimes you just have to take swing at it. You start, you know, you try different things. And by me being up here, I'm here to actually show you some of the like tricks and stuff you can try. But again, there's no cookie cutter way. I'm looking at this left hand side and then I'm looking over here and I'm saying to myself, at the end of the day, I need a one minus sine theta on top, don't I? Okay, so I'm going to introduce, I'm going to take this and I'm going to multiply this by a 1 minus sine theta on the, on the top. Now, am I allowed to just, am I allowed to do that? Only if I do it on the bottom also. Okay, so in other words, I'm really multiplying this expression right here by 1, right? That doesn't change anything. Now, it's a very cleverly chosen one. It's there to kind of make my numerator appear the one that I'm trying to go after. Okay? Now I just hope for the best and just start cleaning this up. All right, let's, uh, <clears throat> let's actually leave the top alone. Let's multiply out the bottom because I'm going to take this and multiply by this. And that I'll have to do like a foil, won't I? Are you doing like 1 minus sine squared theta? That's what it's going to turn into, yes. When I do 1 times 1, I get 1. So let me leave the top alone. You're about to see why I'm leaving the top alone. That's the top. The bottom is going to become 1 minus sine theta plus sine theta minus sine squared theta. Ooh, is that the first time I've used that notation? I think that might be the first time I've used a squared on a trig function. We need to talk about this. May, uh, just in, I'm going to go over it again, just in case. Look, if you have sine of x and you want to square it, x goes into the sine, you, you figure out what that is, and then you square the answer, right? The notation we use, I think I did talk about it. The notation we use for that is this. These are the same. This does not mean square the x first. It means take sine x, then square. So are you all comfortable how I did that? Just foiled out the bottom? Now the middle terms cancel, right? Negative sine, positive sine cancel. So I'm left with on the bottom, what? One minus sine squared theta. So here's who I am. Equals cosine theta, <coughs> and then one minus sine theta, and then over, 1 minus sine squared theta. Now, keep, keep in mind where you're headed here. Where are you trying to get to? This right here, right? 
Okay, you're trying to get to this. Do you have this up top? Yes, okay, we made that appear, didn't we? Now, I need a cosine on the bottom. I don't have a cosine on the bottom yet. Anybody recognize this though? This one minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. And that I'm using uh, the Pythagorean identity. So I'm not gonna write anything down there, I'm just gonna remind you. The very important Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. This equation can be manipulated in any way, that mean moving things around. So I know that if I solve for cosine squared theta, I'm gonna move the sine squared theta over to the right side and this equation is equivalent to this equation. So anywhere I ever see one minus sine squared theta, I can replace it with cosine squared theta. So I'm replacing my denominator with cosine squared theta. Do y'all see what's gonna happen? Yeah, I have one factor. Let's, let's use proper language here. I have one factor of cosine here. I have two factors of cosine here. So I can cancel a single factor. And that will leave me with, 1 minus sine theta over <coughs> cosine theta. And that is equivalent to the right-hand side. Right? So I started with the left-hand side, and I brought it all the way through doing nothing but algebra and turned it into the right-hand side. That's the way that we prove that two things are equivalent. Okay? So there's some weird, do you see what I mean? Like this is less systematic. It's more like just trying to do something. All right, what about this one? Pardon? Uh, in the proving part, when you have a numerator and denominator, I mean, the first step, is it like always to get the one thing multiplied by the other? The question is, if you have a fraction, is the first step to always try and get the numerator? Um, <coughs> no. I'm not going to say it's not a possibility, um, but if it, if it always was the first step, then I would, I would tell you. I would say, yeah, always do that. What, what I instead want you to look at is, look, we started here, right, and we said, how close are we to this, right? We're not very close. So what I could try and do is introduce this on top. But now that you've seen the problem, Try and, try and imagine doing that mentally. If you put a one minus sine theta here and a one minus sine theta here, you, the better you are at algebra, the easier this is gonna be able to see. If you put a one minus sine theta there, you can already see that that's gonna turn into a one minus sine squared, which you can already see is gonna be a cosine squared theta. The further along you can see your own algebra, the easier this stuff's gonna be. Pardon? Yeah, it's, it really is. You have to, and, and that's where it comes down to like familiarity with the formulas. The more familiar you are with them, the better you get. The more practice, the better you get, the more familiar you get. But you can't sit here and watch me do a couple of proofs of, or pr a couple of identities like this and be like, oh, I got it. I mean, you actually have to go in there and get your hands dirty. I love identities. I never, I never even, I hated them when I was learning them, okay? I love them now because they're actually kind of challenging. If you just pick an identity out of nowhere and just try and figure it out. Um, let me continue with the notes here. Let's do um, one plus sine u over sine u and we're going to do plus cotangent u minus cosine u over cosine u. And the instructions here are to rewrite as a single <coughs> expression or single ratio. In other words, they want you to turn this into one fraction. That's what they want. They want one fraction. There's two fractions there, right? We want to be able to put these together into one. Mm -hmm. 
right? So what do you what do you usually do when you try to combine two fractions together? You get a common denominator, right? So the way I'll do it is I'll look at my denominator, sine u, cosine u. It means I'm going to need to introduce a cosine u on the top and bottom here. I'm going to have to introduce a sine u on the top and bottom here. So let's go ahead and do that. Multiply top and bottom by cosine u over cosine u. And then multiply over here uh, sine u <coughs> over sine u. That seem fair? And be a little careful here. On the top here, when you do cosine u across here, there's two terms there, right? So that's going to have to get distributed to both. Same thing with this sine u over here. It, you have two terms here, so it's going to have to distribute into both like that. And then my denominators just come together, and that's going to be my new common denominator. And let's put it together. My new fraction is going to be cosine u, sine u on the bottom. Now tell me what that first numerator is over there. Cosine u plus cosine u, sine u. It doesn't matter how you write it. You can write it cosine u, sine u, or sine u, cosine u, because it's multiplication. And then what about the next one? Plus sine u times cotangent u, and then minus cosine u, sine u. I can, yeah, a cosine u, sine u cancel, right? Those go away completely, don't they? I mean, those cancel each other out. And what about this sine u cotangent u? This just seems out of place. Does it not just seem out of place to you a little bit? What is that? What is sine u times cosine or cotangent u? Let me just write that down here. Sine u. What is cotangent by definition? Isn't that just cosine u over sine u like that? And then the sines just cancel. So isn't this is just a really like complicated way of writing cosine u? Yeah? So this is really cosine u. We'll have this cosine still here and this cosine. So add them together, we get two of them. <laughs> I have two cosine u over cosine u sine u. Is still OK? Now the cosines cancel out. And you're left with 2 over sine u, which is really just 2 cosecant u. Yeah, if we if we want to if we want to get it like as clean and pretty as possible, which is relative, okay? Like when, when they say simplify, make it look nice, like it's, that's subjective. But I think this is all <laughs> legitimately leading us to this very nice expression. Yes? Uh, how are you able to cancel the sine u and the cosine u? Sine u. I'm not canceling them. What I'm doing is I wrote down, you know, what is sine of u? <coughs> sine of u is just sine of u over 1, right? <coughs> cotangent u. By definition, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So it's going to be um, cosine u over sine u. And now, since we're multiplying these, the sines cancel. And you're just left with cosine over 1. Is, is that your, does that address your question? So that's why I said this I'm replacing with cosine u. Any other questions? We're going to do one more example, and then I'm going to let you go. I think we've covered a sufficient amount of material. You have quite a bit of stuff to do from the previous section, and I don't want to get too far into this. We have not really hit the harder stuff yet, so I think it'll be good to come back next week and hit the... when we're all fresh and rested and had a great weekend.
Okay, the book gives you the book gives you some instructions. I'm not even going to give you all the instructions. I'm just going to tell you to simplify this. That's all I'm going to say. Simplify. That means try and clean this up, make it nicer. Any uh, suggestions to simplify this and make it look nicer? I'll take any suggestion here. Let me, let me preface with, with this. I'm willing to do anything you want me to do up here as long as it follows algebraic rules, OK? So if you tell me to multiply top and bottom by 2, I'm OK with that, because that's legal, all right? So looking at that, just go with your gut. Go with your instinct. What is it? You're trying to make that look better. I mean, what do you see? <laughs> Can the top one be negative cosine squared v? Let's ask ourselves that question. So if I have sine squared v plus cosine squared v equals 1, that's the Pythagorean identity, the big daddy that we have to remember. Is there a way to make it have a sine squared v minus 1? Can. I can. I can leave this here. I can bring the 1 over. Yes, that, that, oh, sorry, I forgot the negative. The, the cosine went to the right side. So the question was, can you rewrite the numerator as that? My answer is yes. Do you want me to? Tangent and cosine could be a sine over cosine. Yeah, this is sine over cosine. So let's look at that one real quick. Tangent of V times sine V, just double checking, that's really sine v <laughs> over cosine v times sine v over 1. So the sines don't cancel here. I could rewrite that as sine squared v over cosine. Yes, you could. That would be legal. And helpful. And helpful, do you think? That? What, the sine squared v? It wouldn't, cancel, it wouldn't cancel here because you've got multiple terms. You'd have to have sine squared v in all terms to cancel. You want to factor out a tangent from the bottom. Yeah. Can we do that? That's legal too. I'm not going to do anything yet. I just want, I just want to hear what y'all are feeling. <laughs> Everything that's been suggested is legitimate. We could replace the numerator with this. We could factor out a tangent. We could rewrite tangent v sine v as sine squared v over cosine v. Anything else? So if you brought the tangent out and then brought it up, it would be cotangent. That's legal too. See, it's hard for me to go back to to where you all are with this. You know, it's, it's hard to undo what I've seen and be like in your position. I can just show you what we're supposed to do, but that's just because I've seen so many problems. I, you know, as soon as I write it down, I see it. I don't expect you to be at that point, but I want you to be running through all the algebra you can do to this. Okay, let's just run through some of these and I'll tell you why I would or would not want to do that. Okay, so let's go with how about this whole thing about turning the top into negative cosine squared v? The only thing I don't like about that is that I don't have any cosines anywhere else. And I'm trying to clean this up, so now I know I could make it work with that. That would make it work, but it would be a little bit uh, harder. Have we talked about getting from point A to point B in here? No? I mean, when it comes down to most mathematics problems, you're trying to get from point A to B. And there, there's any number of routes that get you from point A to point B. You know, I look at that problem and, and I can probably do it with one of the shortest routes possible because I've done these, right? You can do these and be on a route. I mean, you can get yourself to point B. Now, you might do this, though, and then come back and as long as you're doing correct algebra, 
you were on a path. You were on a path. As soon as you break a rule, you're off the path. Now, you may accidentally stumble upon B, but have incorrect mathematics in there. But you're on a path as long as you try something. So what we want to try and get better at is when we do something algebraically, to have a purpose for it, to have a reason we did it. So negative cosine squared V, yes, it's valid. I don't quite see the purpose of it yet. Now, we also had factor out a tangent. If we factor out a tangent, what, does the, what would the bottom look like? Sine V minus 1. Sine V minus 1. You'd have a tangent out here, but you'd also have sine V minus 1. Is that helpful? Tangent is sine over cosine, and then you could do what? Multiply the sine, sine back? You could do that too, yes. That's legal too. Uh, but what, what would we get, like sine squared? You would get sine squared minus, minus, minus sine. Okay, that's not bad. That's still, you're on a road, okay? You're, you're like right here. <laughs> but you're on a road, all right? I'm trying to give you a subtle hint here. You pull out tangent V, what's left? Sine, sine, sine V. Sine V. No, on the bottom, sine, sine v minus sine 1. Sine v times sine v minus sine v over Whoa. Sine v. Hold on. I'm not looking at any formulas yet. No, no, that formula is not going to work. But we're, don't, that's not, I don't want you going there. You've got tangents pulled out on the bottom. I'm trying to do it without putting it down on paper because you want to try and see these things at, before you're doing them. If you're just like trying something, it's okay to try, trust me. It's okay to keep trying, but having a purpose for the algebraic move is important. Pull out the tangent. Do you see sine v minus 1 here? Okay. Let me try it with this. What would you do to that? You, okay, so when you look at x squared minus 1 over x minus 1, you're looking at the numerator and you're hopefully seeing a difference of squares. The numerator on that is x plus 1 times x minus 1, isn't it? Okay, you need to see the same thing here. When you pull the tangent out, what do you have on the bottom? Sine v minus 1. What do you have on the top? Sine squared v minus 1. So you can actually rewrite that numerator as a difference of squares. Do you see it now? And one of those is going to cancel, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going I'm to go with that. The top is sine v plus 1 over sine v minus 1. The bottom is tangent v and then sine v minus 1. See, if I would have just put this problem up there and said, hey, we're going to simplify this. Oh, notice the top is a difference of squares. And notice I can pull out tangent and then it cancels. That is just me leading you and you, you know, you're just coming with me and I'm showing you what to do. That doesn't help you when you're sitting there taking a test. You've got to be trying to see this stuff before you're doing it, right? Okay, what's left? Sine v plus 1 over tangent v. Now, I'm not convinced that we're done here, that we can maybe clean this up even more. You can turn tangent into sine over cosine. I agree with that. I agree with that. Yes, we can. And I'm not saying it's wrong. What are you going to do with that, though? Cost goes up. No, I agree. I agree with that. I agree with that. It's, yes, this is, you could. There's something really clean, though, that we can do right now. When you have two terms in a numerator and one term in a denominator, two terms in a numerator 
one in a denominator. Split it up. Can I split this into two fractions? Mm -hmm. Why in the hell would I want to? What would the two fractions look like? Sine V over tan V. That's got to do some flipping and cleaning up, right? And then what would the other one be? One over, one over tangent. What's one over tangent? Cotangent. Co right? So again, all, everything that I heard, yes, you could do that. And, you know, but the cleanest thing I see is splitting this into two fractions plus one over tangent V. This is cotangent V, and that's probably going to be about as clean as it, we can get it. This one, though, we need some work. It's what? It's sine V over, I'm using a big div division bar here, over uh, tangent V, but tangent V is sine V over cosine V. Yeah, so when we flip and multiply, what am I... What am I doing? I'm really looking at this sine v up here as a sine v over 1, right? Mm -hmm. And then when I flip it, this becomes sine v over 1 times cosine v over sine v. And so this is just cosine v plus cotangent v. It takes a lot of effort to get to the point where you're comfortable with this stuff. All right, it's going to take a lot of effort. I'd say if you look, if I look at pre-calculus, I look at the entire subject, and I think about what requires the most, like the highest level of thinking. This is probably the we're in that area right now, because a lot of the other stuff we do in here is very mechanical, but when it comes to like algebraic manipulation, improving identities, things like that, it really requires, you've got to have a very strong foundation with your, your algebra, difference of squares formula, right, all that. So practice, okay? Practice, that's the way it's, it's going to happen. This weekend, focus on uh, taking care of the homework for 8.2. If you'd like, you can start maybe the first couple of problems from 8.4, but we're going to spend all of next week, all of next week, doing identities. Okay, so two full classes of nothing but identities. So I'm hoping that uh, I, I can get you to start thinking outside the box a little bit. Y'all have a great weekend. Uh, sign in sheet, man. Who always has to wait for the sign in sheet to go around? Us. Who? You guys? Okay. Sure. Today's the fifth? Okay, you guys go first.